everybody. Today we are in Cholul slash Merida, Yucatan, Mexico, where we've been. So I gotta be timely today because I got 46 minutes left in this memory card. I forgot to change over. So today we are going to Chichen Itza and we're going to Big Cenote and Isamal. Isamal, which is a yellow town. Valladolid. And Valladolid, which is a, another big town thing, pretty uh, thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful, one of the magic towns. A magic town. Yucatan. A magic town, they call it. So this should be pretty cool. This is gonna be a hell of a day. Like this is like literally like the tour schedule thing we booked is like 12 plus hours. So this will be crazy, but let's have some fun. There's also a Mayan buffet today. So we're gonna have some fun, but uh, let's go see what this day looks like, guys. I have no clue what to expect besides big pyramids, water, and fun. Yeah, and food. So let's get started. Alright everyone, quick history recap. I'm gonna try to encapsulate a whole tour in like a minute. So here we are at a uh, very, very famous church here in Izamal. Um, so yeah, it's huge. I guess this area here, whatever you wanna call it, um, the courtyard slash atrium is the second biggest in the world, only second to that of the Vatican, which is pretty cool. Um, building was created in the 1500s. Uh, mostly by influence of the Spaniards and they forced the Mayans to adopt the Catholic religion and they like killed them all in a big genocide. Uh, the Spaniards would go in the big church, the Mayans would go in this kind of little cathedral here. Um, and interestingly enough throughout this uh, building, throughout the whole building, the Mayans often were involved in the construction. Um, they hid their like Mayan stones which ha like had like snake symbols and stuff on them. Um, so they would like, they were still worshipping and are representing their Mayan culture and gods, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, really neat. They have some like original art still from the 1500s. It's big, there's 70 some arches around. And uh, that's pretty much it. The Pope came here as well to try to like smooth over, you know, uh, bad blood I guess from a whole genocide of the Mayan culture. But nonetheless, Pretty cool. So uh, yeah, then the town is yellow because nobody really knows. There's a couple theories. One is that um, it was like a pandemic and so they painted everybody like house yellow who got it, like yellow fever or something. And then another one was just like, they painted it for the Pope and another one was some other reason. So pretty interesting, pretty cool. And uh, Izamal. And here is Izamal, the Izamal sign by that big cathedral thing. So it's a lot of these Mexico cities have these uh, Izamal and they call them magic cities, which is pretty cool. And here we have a little square which is all decked out with Christmas stuff, Feliz Navidad. The, uh, the biggest thing I would say in all of my findings is that Mexico has no shortage of Christmas de decorations, guys. This is it's pretty cool. So Feliz Navidad, everybody. Merry Christmas. Cool stuff. And here we are at Kanich Kakmu, which is the second biggest standing at least existing now Mayan pyramid in all of Mexico so let's go check this thing out apparently it's like 200 some meters by 180 meters it's very very big but uh really neat so uh I don't know like just you see this stone and it just looks like it's a Mayan pyramid I don't know how else to explain it but definitely warming up today let's get some steps in let's go check this thing out cool eh? And it just keeps going and going, it's bigger. Is, we just came from way down there, but it's really interesting, like this is all rock. And yes, grass has kind of grown over it, but it's all like lava rock, it looks like. So that's pretty cool, but we'll have to get to the top. And although there is technically a gradual incline in steps, you can see these steps are a little more just like climbing a rock face, but uh, nonetheless, up we go. I'll try to do this with one hand while I focus climbing up these steps and not fall. And voila! Here we go. Okay. We are on the top of the pyramid. Quite a view up here. Definitely pretty cool. Hopefully you guys can see all right. This is nice. Big view of the city. Let's burn something over there. But yeah, Izamal and Kitchkingmu, I forget how to pronounce it. 
Hi right, everyone, we are at a cenote. I don't even know what it's called, but we're going to a cenote. So it should be pretty cool. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show you this one. There's actually a buffet included, so that's the Mayan buffet, which we're going to uh, check out after this. That being said, I don't know though this is going to work. You have to leave your stuff up here. Um, you, life jackets are mandatory at this one. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I can get some footage and pictures, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'll update you, hopefully be able to show you it. And if not, well, I'll tell you about it after. And holy crap, everybody, look at this cenote. This is huge. I don't know if you can comprehend, but like, look at like, just like that, like of how big that is, that should give you an idea of how big this cenote is. So literally just a huge, huge, huge body of water. It's like 150 plus feet deep, um, just insane. So let's go swimming. All right, the cenote was fantastic. So big, so surreal, it's crazy. It's just this big, 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 cave with water and it looks like something come out of the movie like the alien movie i'll try to show you some pictures from down below but yeah, now it's time for the mayan buffet guys a mayan buffet so this would be pretty cool i have no clue to expect but authentic mayan food here in mexico guys so mayan buffet let's go have some fun uh we don't have too long we have uh like i think about 50 minutes so uh let's we'll go do some stuff then we're gonna see another pyramid after but mayan buffet let's go eat All right guys, I went three cochinita tacos with the uh, onions on top. Then I have uh, pico and habanero salsa, which I'll probably put on that. I got black beans, tomatoes or tomates, cucumbers, a coleslaw, uh, chilaquiles, um, eggs. I also have a pork dish. And then I have some piña, some pineapple, and something else, which you said was really good. Picama. What is it? Picama. It's like water, so you just... Oh, it's like... Tahin and something. Here you the salsa. It's so far away from the... They have a habanero salsa. I just tried it. It's pretty good. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video where today we're here at a Mayan buffet, at least that's what it was called. Uh, you know, more familiar, you could also call it like a Mexican food buffet. But specifically, Mayan being the traditional kind of Mexican culture, etc. So this was featuring a lot of what you could consider traditional kind of Mexican foods, at least in the Mayan culture. Um, and or again, there's definitely some modern features, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm sh I'm kind of skeptical they had chilaquiles back in the Mayan days. That being said, guys, so pretty cool. Um, this whole day was really cool and definitely a unique experience. So this buffet was at one of the cenotes. So a cenote is essentially a great big cave which is full of water. Now the cenote, as you saw, was open-faced. So it didn't have like a lid over top of it or a roof, but it was a great big crevasse, a great big kind of hole in the ground filled with water and it was absolutely insane. So these tacos I'm eating is called the cochinita pabil, which is kind of, it is a pork dish and it is a method of cooking it. Um, so it is cooked kind of in a bit of a chili sauce. Um, it's very, very nice flavors. It's not spicy, but it has lots of spices. Um, really nicely flavored. I is one of my, I think, favorite tacos that I experienced in Mexico. I will also say that Throughout this video, my pronunciations are horribly wrong for most items, and it is, you know, none but my uh, unfamiliarity with Mexico, but I will say I'm a little bit more familiar now. I spent more time there. This was very early in our trip. I also had some uh, refried beans in addition to the tacos. Tacos, shout out those corn tortillas in Mexico. They are fantastic. Um, chilaquiles was a really unique item. The way I would describe it is kind of like a scrambled egg or kind of like a scrambled omelet with little corn chips in it. It was very familiar to, or very similar to an item I had in Texas, which was called a migas. And then you could also um, kind of compare it to like, if that is still unfamiliar, imagine scrambled egg omelet with like right there, little corn chips in it, which they absorb a little bit of moisture. They remain a little crisp, um, almost like, I don't know, like crispers or bugles. Um, it's really unique. I really like them. And definitely something which is uh, quite popular in Mexico and the region. 
Um, here I am about to try some of their coleslaw. So the coleslaw, I will say, was, mm, well, there you go. It was interesting. It was very, 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 uh, I think honestly it was just cabbage and straight mayonnaise. Um, you know, not the coleslaw dressing I'm used to. I'm used to, you know, be mayonnaise, vinegar, etc., etc., kind of more North American style, but this was not too bad by itself. In addition to the chilaquiles and the tacos, uh, we are now going to be getting into um, what was kind of like a mixed uh, mixed vegetable dish. We had some uh, cucumbers there, pepinos, uh, there was some tomatoes, tomates, um, which, I mean, I love vegetables in general. And so this buffet visit is really a kind of me just normal eating. This was not to like crush or destroy the buffet. This is like, hey, Joel wants to eat. We're at a buffet at the cenote, and uh, you know I didn't want to mess up the rest of my day. We had a big eventful day going to Chichen Itza. So here I was getting into a pork dish, um, which was very, very peppery. It's good. And it absolutely was. Um, the way I would describe this pork dish was kind of like if you've had like a fajita dish. It's kind of what it was. It seemed like it was, you know, kind of uh, sauteed, you know, uh, peppers, onions, etc., with kind of a grilled uh, pork. And yeah, like in grilled, I mean like a flat top, not like a barbecue grill, but kind of like, yeah, basically that. That's how I would describe it. Essentially like pork fajitas. So pork uh, with the vegetables all kind of sauteed together. Um, and hey, no complaints at that. Then we're getting into one of my favorite fruits being pineapple and this root vegetable. So I don't actually remember what this root vegetable was called. I tried Googling it. I'm unable to find the name, but it is a very crisp, uh, root vegetable, which they put tahini on, so it's like crispy, it's crunchy. The only like the texture I'd almost compare it to is like a really, 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 really crisp watermelon. Um, but again, it's almost flavorless. And Alessandra ordered a drink, which I didn't see her do, so it caught me by surprise. <laughs> And like I said, I really, really like pineapple. Um, the drink Alessandra got is tamarind, a tamarind drink, which is a very Mexican thing. It's a really cool flavor. It's like a seed, um, which they obviously grind, process, etc. And uh, it's it's like it's it's really cool. It's I mean they obviously sweeten it, but it's kind of spicy, um, which is very, very unique. And that's the best way I could describe it. It's just. It's hard to describe if you haven't had it, but it's sweet. It's spicy. It's available in candies and drinks in you know definitely a variety of things but if you ever get to mexico definitely try something with tamarind or tamarino um, which i really like it here we're back onto another round so i had some more of the uh, cochinita papil tacos i had lots of the habanero salsa on it as well so what i really like about mexico is all their salsas or the majority of their salsas are you know just like legit straight up ingredients. It's not like a canned tomato based salsa. Like this salsa, this habanero salsa was literally like chopped onions, um, habanero peppers, and in lime juice, which I mean, it's basic, but it's delicious. Shout out to one biting those tacos. That's just what I do y'all. It's the best way to get it in your mouth without making a mess. Just shove it on in there. Um, so really like these tacos, really like them with the habanero salsa. I also had some pico de gallo on there. And we're starting to get into a little bit of uh, dessert, at least Alessandra is. Alessandra also gave me um, one of these little things to try. Now, the way I would describe this, it's very similar to a pakora. Um, it's a corn flour, which is fried, and it had uh, chaya in it. Chaya, not chia, not like the chia seeds, but chaya. Chaya is kind of like a green plant. Uh, they make drinks out of it generally. It's really unique. You have to cook it. You can't eat it raw from my understanding. And it was it was okay, it was fine. It was, like I said, essentially like a, a pakora, um, which I mean, was not bad. Pakora is being a, uh, an Indian dish, in fact. But definitely to this point, the my favorite was the uh, tacos for sure. Going on this last order, I had um, some more of refried beans, which I really like. I had some more tomatoes, and I had some more of kind of the, uh, again, kind of pork fajitas, I'll call it. Uh, of course, a little bit of a toronja or a grapefruit, some pineapple, and again, I just put more salsa on the kind of fajitas. Um, they took my cutlery, so I wasn't sure if that was a sign of saying, hey, 
tell this guy to stop eating. No, I'm just kidding. I think it was just an honest mistake. So I grab some there. Um, again, join some vegetables, guys. This is generally what I eat. Uh, pretty, pretty, you know, honestly, like pretty consistent what I eat on an average day. Um, you know, kind of the similar style of meals, like things like vegetables, fruit based. It's a very plant based diet. Um, with some delicious animals, you know, some delicious beans, some fruit, you know, maybe some breads or some oats or whatever. I didn't have oats in Mexico, but you get my picture. So if you kind of want to look into what I generally eat like on an average day, that's kind of what I, you know, eat like. Very basic, choosing, you know, kind of healthy options. But I love spices, I love salt, I love sauces and salsas and flavor. So like I said, shout out all the fresh salsas in Mexico. Really, really, really like that part. Really love that aspect of the cuisine and I love their readily availability just everywhere. So let's be honest. I mean, you know, this buffet, was it lackluster? Meh, it was fair. You know, for what it was, it was really reasonable. Um, the cost for the cenote and the buffet combined was approximately about uh, maybe about 13 or 14 US dollars and then probably about you know I don't know let's say uh, 17 Canadian something along those lines so overall like I said no real complaints I did give you a brief scan of the buffet earlier most of the items again was the tacos they had one or two kind of chicken dishes um, they had the chilaquiles they had this pork dish and you know the rest of it was kind of like some generic kind of frozen vegetables um, you know some of the fresh vegetables like you've been seeing me having like the tomatoes the cucumbers um, you know some of the fruits very limited selection of the fruits and stuff but and then like I said the couple desserts which we'll be getting to here momentarily but again I mean overall for what it was it was totally reasonable um, it was just a quick meal on this crazy adventurous day. And like I said, this was a very functional visit to a buffet. This is basically just Joel normally eating, normally having lunch per se, you know, versus like trying to crush the buffet because I still wanted to be functional. Um, we had a long rest of the day, you know, ahead of us. And uh, overall, it was definitely pretty cool. This is also kind of the first, I'll call it Mayan buffet, Mexican buffet that I actually got to go to. And there's going to be lots more. I had, I got, was able to visit quite a few buffets actually when I was in Mexico, which was super cool. I'm not actually sure if buffets are like a traditional Mexican thing or if it's more, you know, I'll say brought forth by the American influence. But Mexico buffets, um, they were serving this buffet as a counter service. Um, that was the most, actually, that was what I saw all through Mexico um, due to the pandemic. Um, but, you know, overall, no complaints. So let's get to these fruits and then we will dive into our uh, desserts. Muy bien. A tam tamarind? Tamarind? Agua tamarind. Agua tamarind. How's your drinks? Or your desserts? We good? Mm -hmm. Like it? Yeah, very good. Delicious. Flan. Flan. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the rice pudding? Yeah. Very soon. Mm. Muy bien. We have to go, but always time for rice pudding. This is delicious. Very good, very sweet, very cinnamony, creamy. <laughs> Ran out of time. All right, everyone, so there was the Mayan Mexican buffet. It was really good. I really like the cochinita, the tacos. Um, I love it. It's like a pork and kind of like a chili-ish sauce. Just delicious. I've had that a couple times. It's one of my favorite tacos that I've been having here, and that, those were absolutely exceptional. I got them to douse it every single time in the habanero salsa. They kept, all, all the guys were asking me, like, you sure, you sure? I'm like, mas, mas. I love, you guys, like, I actually love spice. Like, a habanero spice is really nice. Um, just like, you know, not in like sheer, sheer, sheer quantities. Like, challenges are different. But uh, absolutely delicious. I really like that. The pork was pretty cool. It was like uh, peppery. Um, the rice pudding was really, really good. Tacos, I think, were definitely the, uh, the, the keeper, the winner today. But the piña, 
the pineapples, piña, piña. Pineapples are really good as well. But yeah, we're out of time, so I can't really eat anymore. But uh, we're gonna hit the road, and we're we'll, uh, gonna go see Chichen Itza, Kitch, Kitchen Itza, whatever. It's a big pyramid, so we'll get there and uh, we'll have some more fun. And here we are in Chichen Itza, Chichen Itza, which is where the uh, big Mayan temple is. Uh, apparently this is a very, very big one. Alessandro, you've seen it. Is it massive? Oh, it's, it's very massive. Yeah, it's beautiful. So we're gonna get some, uh, do some walking after the buffet. And uh, there's lots of really cool things for sale here. I'll show you some of those. Uh, I saw some a second ago, but like I said, very intriguing, the Mayan culture. Very interesting with the, all the skulls and all the colors and everything. So I'll show you some things real quick and holy jump it's, I can see we're getting towards the mountain. Or not the mountain, the pyramid. Look at that, beautiful. Crazy. The art is just... And look at this woodwork. Look, they look fake. T-shirts. And holy cow. It's out here, and they used to play soccer or something like that. It's when they jugaba la pelota o algo similar al juego de pelota. It's not a game. It is a ritual. No es un juego. Es un ritual. So, so, so sacred. All right, so talking about history and showing the place. So this is actually a big field where they used to play a game like, I don't know, it's not soccer, but it's like racquetball, we'll call it. But they could only hit it with their apparently hips and elbows. And 21 feet up in the air. 21 feet? Or wait, was it three meters, seven meters? I don't know, we'll say 21 feet. Maybe it's higher. Anyway, they tried to put the ball through that. And apparently it was like a, th a ball... I don't know, the size of like a mini watermelon and it weighed like three pounds. And they would fight uh, for the death basically. They'd play and the losing team, one of their members got decapitated up there. So but this is huge, like this is huge, huge, huge field. So, and this was like a big ceremony thing and this is supposed to represent the universe. The ball was the sun and yeah, this is, this is insane. Okay, so here's the main pyramid. I'm gonna try to, uh, again, give you a brief history. So this is, there's actually three pyramids in this on a great big platform you can't see, which goes down something like 17 meters, and then, or seven, I don't know, 17 feet or meters, either way, crazy. And then there's a cenote. No, no, big platform, and then 17 meters under this is a big cenote. So there's a big underwater cave under this thing. Um, there is 300, and 65 uh, steps in the whole thing, representing, like on all sides, representing the days of the year. Uh, it was, again, there's multiple temples inside. On the inside, they found like a total jade leopard and stuff. The crazy thing is it's also built that, like on the solstice, I think it was March 21st, um, the sun falls in a certain way, which leads down this line and lights up the serpent, the snake head, which is right down there. Um, which the snake is, I guess, the Mayan, like, ultimate Mayan god, and, and hence you see it everywhere. Um, yeah, with feathers, yeah. And then here is the Temple of Venus. Uh, they have snakes all over it. This is the warrior temple. Over there they would uh, perform human sacrifices where they ripped the heart out. And apparently, in, in an eclipse, the sun or whatever comes, like, directly right through there, supposed to representing, like, a chest. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that, which is absolutely insane. And this was recently declared a wonder of the world. No joke, it's huge. So uh, this is crazy. And here's an area with which is appears to be another pyramid, but I guess technically it's called the uh, observatory. Um, this is this area in general is I guess usually closed. So cool that it's open today. And again, still has the serpents there. Absolutely amazing. These have been there for like thousands of years. Um, obviously kind of washed away with the water and you know, erosion, but. It's ridiculous, so you can see the detail and art and all this. I don't know how you'd even start to build this, so crazy. My mistake, this is the observatory, which really does look like an observatory. Mm -hmm. The Mayans were big in, in uh, like astrology and calendars and the movement of the sun. 
So it, this obviously makes sense. So yeah, I guess this area is usually closed or often closed. There's even like more pyramidish buildings over there. So this is just, this place is huge. And here's another one. Seriously, these just appear to be never ending. There's what, now that's like six or seven? Mm -hmm. Six or seven pyramids here, super cool. Oh, actually, is that another one? That might even be another one. Cause like it's partially built up at least. So at least an old previous one. This is insane. There's just so many of these. Uh... And here's another one. This will be the last one at least we get to see, but I think it's the last one around. This one is again, huge. Like there's a lady over there. Absolutely giant. Here, let's see. This is what I look like. Hold on. That's what I look like next to it, but I'm far away. Anyway, it's very big. This is insane. And this one has holes in it. And I don't know, like, I just can't, like, I can't imagine, like, how do they build these things? Like crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, everyone, last stop of the day. Vaja Delit, Olit, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's a little city. Um, quite a bit of yellow as well, but the whole town is, well, that's yellow, but the whole town is not yellow. But uh, yeah, so we'll check this place out. I don't know what they're gonna have to offer here. Just kind of stop on in, check out, and here we're doing some shaved ice right there. Maybe we'll have to get something. It's been a it's been a long hot day. It's been a lot of fun. Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza, Chichen Itza was really really cool. Definitely like I see why it's a wonder of the world. I would definitely recommend it. I see why so many people go. But definitely if you go, don't just try to see the main thing. Try to go see the like area we did at the end there with the observatory and everything, because it literally like, doubled the amount of Aztec, Mayan, Mayan, I guess, Mayan pyramids, buildings. So let's go see if there's anything here to check out. Good stuff. As you can see, the sun is setting. We have a very nice fountain. This is a well-kept little courtyard here. Tourist information with a free walking tour. It's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, there's a little fountain. Looks really nice. There's the cathedral. Seems like a lot of these towns have a cathedral and a square. Kind of, it very much reminds me of Merida. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, definitely a nice little area with the sun setting. Cool, it's cooled off a bit too, so it's, uh, it's very comfortable out. And here we got an esquitas, which is corn and basically mayo and chili powder and lime. Lemon. Yes. Lemon. Give it a try. Let me know how it is. Muy bien? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Delicious. Let's give it a try. Oh, it's delicious. And there's cheese in it. Cheese in it too, I believe. Here, I'll face. That's what I do with the light. All right. Mm. Mm. It has so many, like, flavors and so much stuff going on. So like, just a little bit of heat. A little bit of acidity of the riches from the mayonnaise and stuff. It's very unique. I have it in the States, but gotta have one in Mexico, you know, so. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And all of a sudden, just getting a marquesitas, which is kind of like a pancake. Um, they just put Nutella, but it, traditionally it's cheese, so it's queso. And they roll it up like that. So it's basically like a pancake with cheese, and then either something like a sweet topping, uh, like a fruit, some other ingredient, or all the above. This would probably be good, Nutella and uh, cream cheese. But uh, anyway, Nutella and cheese, look at that. It sounds, it sounds interesting. I'm it sounds delicious. Well, I'd give it a go. It's, it's a hot, you gonna try it? Hopefully it's not too hot. Mm. It's good? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna like this. Yeah? So good. All right, I'm a little skeptical, but so good. I will try it. Ready? Here we go. Oh, it smells like Nutella. Mm -hmm. I don't smell the cheese, we smell warm Nutella. It's really good. You know, I have to say, it is good. Sweet and salty? It's like, so it's like Nutella, and then I get the warm, very crispy kind of pancake. 
I don't really get too much of a cheese flavor. It's more like protection. Yeah, it's like the cheese adds like a richness, like additional richness. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That is very so nice. Bon yeah. And here's we're kind of off the beaten trail. Here's a monument with like gold birds on top, and it's uh, seems like honor, like a memorial for military and something about kids dying in 1847. Heroes. Heroes, yeah. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. But like I said, it's getting getting a little dark, less to see, but look, there's some people using the Jesus chairs, although they're touching. They are not leaving room for Jesus, so. everyone thank you so much for watching today's video i really appreciate it if you click my face right here you can subscribe yes that's right click my face subscribe guys it helps me out it helps you out then you don't miss an upload and hopefully i can meet you when i come to your city also click a video right here i specifically pick two videos yes that's right two videos specifically for you right here so click a video right now get that going and it's going to end so click one quick let's go let's go and have a great day